In this video, I want to show you a simple CSS trick for controlling space between elements inside the content area. This simple pattern is very often overcomplicated. So I want to show you the proven technique I keep reusing in every single project so you can steal it and use in your projects as well. One of the key principles in creating components that are very easy to reuse is to never add margins to components by default. And that applies to complex components and simple elements like headings, paragraphs and lists. And that's why when I start a new project, I make sure that I remove all margins from those elements if they present in the user agent style sheets. But if components don't have margins by default, how do we maintain space between them in our project? For vertical spacing, one of the solutions is to create a component with a single task add space between the elements and the components that you put inside the component. That way we maintain our components margin free and keep the system for vertical spacing in our projects. I've touched on this topic before on this channel, but the amount of comment I received on the video about margin trim suggesting to use gap for creating space in between elements inside the content area was surprising. So I decided to create this video to dive deeper into this pattern and explain why I still think the gap is not the best tool for this and margin is still much better. Let's get straight to the demo. I've built it to look like an article in a magazine. It has a title, intro text, metadata, featured image, subheadings, and the markup is also pretty straightforward. We have an article tag and inside we have a div with a class content flow and that will be our component that controls spacing. But right now there is no spacing between the elements whatsoever. So let's fix that. Let's start by using gap, the approach that some of you suggested, and I'll explain why I still prefer margins. First thing we need to do is convert the content flow div into a flex container. I'll go to content flow and that's the CSS file that controls the styles for this element. Add content flow, do display flex and we'll do flex direction column. Perfect. And all we have to do is add the gap. Thank you copilot. It's already suggesting to use the flow space. It's the variable that I defined for the flow space. This works but it looks very monotonous because the space between the elements is always the same, you cannot create different gaps inside the same container. Because the space is always the same, there is no visual hierarchy. The only thing that creates hierarchy in this article is subheadings. We could do much better. I would add more space before the subheadings. I would add more space before and after each image. And that would sort of like break the rhythm and make the article more engaging. Some of you suggested that you can still use gap and have different spacing. That's true. We can do something like like this. I have this rule in my clipboard. So basically we have content flow, then we select uh, subheadings that go after any element. So right now if I save this and check it out, yeah, there's more space before each subheading. But I don't like this approach because let me show you. If I open the inspector here and enable this flex visualizer, you'll notice that the top margin that we just added is not the only space that we have between the elements. We have that space plus the gap that we defined previously. And that's what I don't like about this approach. I like being intentional. So when I define a space to Excel in CSS, I want to open the site on the front end and see the, that space applied to my subheadings. But what I see instead, I see to Excel space plus the gap and that's another thing I need to keep in mind another decision another calculation that I need to make and there are some cases where the the space between subheading and the paragraph needs to be smaller than the space between uh, each paragraph so what do I do in that case negative margins it gets complicated very quickly and like the values that def you define in CSS do not translate to the values that you see on the front end what's a better approach you guessed it we can do it easily with margins. When using margins, we also start by adding the base space between the elements, and I like to do it like so. Thank you, Copilot. I like this suggestion, but I also like the logical properties. So I'll use margin block start. Very similar approach. We've talked about this pattern on this channel, which basically adds space to every element inside the container that is preceded by another element. This way we have the similar result as with the gap approach. We have the space between every element, but the benefit here is that we can easily override that space. For headings, for example, we can do something like this. Similar concept, and we just override that value. But if I inspect this, 
you'll notice that there is no extra gap that we're taking into account. So this feels more intentional to me because I see two Excel space here. I inspect it. It's the same space, like very, very intuitive. I could continue targeting specific selectors like this. So for example, for, for this image, which has a class of media element, I could just keep adding it to this is pseudo class and do something like which will add the space before this media element. But I think that the better approach is to create a few utility classes for common spacing inside that container. So you could have something like has medium flow space, has large flow space, has small flow space, and you sort of like have those buckets where you just assign a component to one of those buckets. For my use case, I would create uh, something like this. So copy this rule and instead of using is, here do has medium flow space that will add top margin to the media element and it already has that class applied to it that's why we see the margin applied if we want to add additional spacing at the bottom as well what we can do is we can copy this rule and reverse the logic it would add additional space to every element that goes after so that way, every single time you add this class to any element inside the content area, it will have this additional spacing. So let's try that. We can just add this space to the featured image. So let's find it in here. Okay, media element. So I paste the class here, save it and boom, done. So let's put the system to the test and add a completely new component to our article, something like a callout. It would look something like this. We would have very simple markup, a div with the class callout, then we have text inside. For CSS, we would add a background color, we would add some border radius and some padding. So let's add it to the article. I don't know, it's like somewhere in here, let's say after the word freshness. Perfect. So this would be a perfect spot for it. Now we have the call out, but you see there is no space between the elements. So how do we fix that? We already have a solution for that. We have our content flow class. We add it here and now we have space between the elements. And that shows us that content flow classes can be easily nested inside each other. Another problem that I see with this component is that because it has a background, ideally it would have more space before and after. It's similar to the image component right here. So we already have a utility class for that as well. So we can do has medium flow space. We add that. Now we have more space before and after. And this is how our article looks at the end. Look, we have much better visual hierarchy right now. There is more space before and after the featured image. There is more space before each subheading, creating this nice separation of sections in the article. There's more space before and after the image. We can keep reusing those utility classes that we created for other components. And this is how you create vertical rhythm in CSS. And if you want to learn more about spacing and how to use margins, paddings, and gaps, check out the video I linked on the screen, and I'll see you in the next one.